some things to you. Our, the low bid that we got uh, was $628,325.72. It shows you a breakdown of what we get from the grant, which is 80% of our project. The matching, which is us and our what our bond issue will be and what the in kind will be, which is 20% of the project. And then you've got a column for the total uh, budget. Um, you can see there that the construction costs are estimated or uh, calculated to be $509,700. We will pay $118,625 and that will come up with a $628,325. The engineering cost is $98,000 is paid out of our grant. Um, the utilities, the Demolition and haul off of the concrete and daily inspection, inspections are our in kind, which that totals up to $36,840. That's what our contribution is, besides the, uh, the, the uh, bond issue. Now, um, when you add all that up, the grant budget plus the budget there, um, you see that the total under a match budget is larger than at the very top where it says 151000 That's a difference of $3,540. Uh, that's going to cost us extra, okay? Um, and that ends up being in the total as well. Uh, on the second page, it's got one little statement there. Um, the cash match is 118625 The in kind is 36840 So that's what our part is, 155465 So I want you to see the numbers so that we could make some kind of an educated decision about about this. Um, Lisa made a statement to me the other day that some of this money has already been committed or spent regardless of whether the project gets done. Is that a fair statement? The engineering. You're going to have uh, $48,000. If you don't do the project, we still pay Bell Engineering $48,000 for the project design and we'll pay an additional $3,000 for the bidding process uh, when they had the pre-bid meeting and then when we had the bid opening. That was another three thousand dollars. That's fifty-one thousand dollars that we're obligated to build in real money, for, whether we do the project or not. So that leaves approximately. You take one hundred eighteen six twenty-five, pull take the fifty-one, 51 take fifty-one sixty-seven. So sixty-seven thousand dollars is the real money that's going to have to be spent, based upon what I understand Lisa tell me the other day that's already been committed. Yeah. 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 If you don't do the project, we're we're out fifty one thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So uh, 
you know, I've called this meeting primarily just for this issue right here. Some other things popped up that we could handle briefly, but this is the main uh, main thing that we need to talk about tonight. So uh, I'm open to hearing what you've got to say. Well, I think if, if we're going to just be talking about a hundred thousand dollars, I know that's quite a bit of money, but it, to lose uh, six hundred and seven thousand seven hundred is well. The hundred eighteen thousand six twenty five will be in a bond issue. It, yeah. it, it'll be paid out over forty years. Yeah. We just add it to our the rest of the bond issues that we're paying for our water projects and for sidewalk projects they've done in the past and all the other projects we've had. So uh, we just add that to the total we already paid. So that's 118,625 will be done out of a bond issue mm -hmm. for 40 years and before mm -hmm. interest. If you pay all the same amount of interest, principal each year, that's $3,000 a year. 2965.63. Um, it's, it's, I think it's one, usually 1% 1 is what it is that we get uh, the bond issues for. No. need to know <laughs> one way or the other. Well, Ben's I'm not going to be here after the first year. I think we're going to go ahead and do it. Sounded kind of ominous there, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that part of this sidewalk project was was to help the trail town uh, process this make, 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 program. make it clear I want it to go on a record exactly where all this is going okay uh, what we're, what's in this project here will start down at the sewer lift station right here on Sarantown Road right at the edge of town and it will put new sidewalk past the, the trailer park uh, and come up and there's a, a house that has an um, it's a brick sidewalk. It's up closer to the house. All right. All that brick will be taken up and put out here um, a historical society or whatever uh, had the influence that that's going to be part of the sidewalk. That brick is going to be moved out next to the road for the rest of the sidewalk. On Main Street? No, it's on Union yeah. Street over here. Yeah, where the tree is and it's, the roots are all bad. And, yeah. Yeah, okay. Where it is, it's non-functional now. That's where a sidewalk used to be. And they're going to take all those brick up and bring them out next to the road where the sidewalk's actually going to be. It's going to be close to the road. It will come all the way up Union Street to just to the consignment shop. It will not take any of the underneath the sidewalk or underneath the awning of the consignment shop. The crossover old oh, crossover Main Street and it will put a sidewalk in from Brandon Thomas's station all the way down to Charlie's Market. Okay. And then it will go up Union Street from Apple Alley uh -huh. all the way up to Clay Street and connect with the Safe School project there. It will do Main Street from in front of Jerry's place, uh, all the two blocks of Main Street. To the old Commonwealth Community Bank? Yeah. And stop yeah. there? Yeah, it'll stop there at that uh, at Washington Street, right down here is where it'll stop. Okay. That is um, 
is not going to be just sidewalk. Um, of course, we're planning on decorative lamp post. Was any of that included in this pricing? No. No, that's going to be our, what they will do is they will set a base and a year, whatever, whenever we get the money and decide to put them in, we'll put in the lamp post, but the conduit will already be run underneath and the, and the bases will be set. Uh, there's going to be, in the plans, there's a, a, a green space. There's, I think there's three in the, in the block, uh, the first block off of Union Street, and I think there's two here. I believe there's five altogether that are green spaces. They're 11 feet long, three and a half feet wide, and that's where we will have some type of vegetation in there, okay? The original plans call for small tree, shrubs, perennials, ground cover, okay? Then there, we'll, we'll have, between those will be a four foot wide uh, paver section, brick pavers, and that, that will cover all of the conduit for the electrical and anything else that's buried under their water lines, things like that. Uh, it'll include curb and guttering, of course, and... Um, was work on 231 an option not to do it on 231 or because of the type of grant it was, some work had to be done on 231? Well, what, we did, what they did was they, they took the initial project and broke it up into sections. This section costs $45,000. This section costs $32,000. Mm -hmm. And what they tried to do is get the most bang for the buck right now with uh, So this is based on an in our engineer's recommendation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He sat down with the contractor and together the contractor said, well, like if we did this corner at the consignment shop, that's going to be a real big headache there. And he said, maybe it's, uh, I don't know what it is, let's just say it's $45,000, okay, for just that one little corner right there. But yet we can do from the consignment shop all the way down to for the same amount the of lift station for $32,000, something same like point. that, you see. So what they did is they tried to get the sections right now that would give us the most for our money. So what I'm hearing from you saying is everywhere that has been planned to lay out based upon the dollar figure where it's totally a recommendation upon the engineers for best right. bang for and the dollar. Right, and when working with the contractor. Okay, so. Okay. And of the $118,000 uh, that is real money we have to spend, we've already spent 51000 of that regardless of whether we take the bid yeah. or not. How long do they anticipate all this taking? Do what now? When is the work plan? How long is this going to be under construction and all that? Uh, what we talked about was trying to get as much as we could done right now. Get some, maybe some of the easier part done before bad weather sets in. And then we would uh, put a stoppage to the contract until Pretty the good weather starts again in the spring. Because we can't get it all done before bad weather sets in, so they were going to come and do as much as they could right now, and and then just stop the contract, you know, because contracts are so many days, you know, the penalty set in, so they were just going to uh, interrupt the contract until good weather started again. So it'd probably be uh, probably April or something like that before it gets. And when they start. Down on Main Street and everything. They'll probably will, save it for last. How will that affect like the parking and all that? Um, that? Yeah, it's going to. I mean, they're going to have to have access to haul off, you know, the concrete that's there once it's broken up. So there won't be any parking on that side of the street. Uh, they could go ahead and park in the, you know, in their parking lot or on Center Street down the side. Cause, but uh, they just. Part of it will be closed off while they're doing that work, like a block at a time. You know, so. And this, 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 this right here, this isn't one of those that's kind of like our 
issue we're having down here with the paving stuff. This isn't going to where somebody's going to come back and bite us with a bigger bill than. No, no. This is what this is contracted to. work. There is a contingency if if we agree <coughs> that if there's something that needs to be done. You know, they've got a, a whole long list of different things that could possibly happen, and the contractor gives a unit price for each one of them. So. Like if they need to do sawing, uh, I think you put in his bid a hundred dollars a foot, but <laughs> we can rent a saw <laughs> saw for a lot less than that. Is there any buildings on that side of the street on Main Street that is going to require water or sewer taps that would need to? We're going to relocate all the meters. They're all going to be out there in that, that in the grass paper, in the grassy area in, the, in the brick paper strip. Yeah. So in other words, if you had to go down into them and. Some of them are out there already, out there close to it. So while we're doing it, there's all new meters going to be installed. So we'll make sure we got we don't have to go back six months after the fact and dig one up and put a new meter in. Yeah, but you know, if it is, it's going to be in that the brick paper where it's not going to be a destruct, destructive pro, uh, process. Something I'm curious also, you know how every uh, like when we do the fall festival or something, you know, we always have to rent or something, you know, for electrical. Well, that's the, yeah. That's, care of. that's what the yeah. That's what the the lamp post. Uh, they're going to have electrical outlets on them. Okay. So but they're already, also going to they're gonna also going to have speakers. So, so that's one of the things be ready for us when we do. We're trying to, to plan in advance. That's what I mean. We may not be. We had talked about that once before over several different occasions. That maybe the money isn't there to do that kind of things right now. But if you're going to do it, you would be foolish not to go ahead and put electrical. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the way speakers are anymore, I imagine they'll all be Bluetooth speakers or or, or wireless speakers. But you put speakers on the poles so you could broadcast music, or mm -hmm. if you've got event, certain events going on, you could like holiday music. Yes. Christmas time. Yes. We've we've already left a space at the corner of the parking lot behind the wing wall there next to the sidewalk. We've left left a space where they will tie in, where they'll put in a stub for us to put in a uh, post with a control box for the. Do we know what these lamp posts and stuff? Do we have any idea of what we're looking at, or that we really gone down that road yet? Because um, I was thinking that, that that would be, you know, you said you were talking about lamp posts and then like the vegetation vegetation area. Yeah, I mean, that could be something where, you know, say like Lichens Printing wants to donate and mm -hmm. claim that, you know, and, and you know. And that I thought, kinda, that question when he was first talking to the engineers regarding this project. He asked Trail Town to look and make some recommendations. And I think there's a binder out there. It's just been a long time since I think yeah. that, that, that he came through. But I do think it would be a good idea at some point in time when we got close to that, the city could ask is somebody, you know, maybe you would want to put one up in, in memory of your grandmother right. or grandfather yeah. and say, you know what, have a plaque out there. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't ask for that because mm -hmm. I can tell you from the hospital standpoint, when we did renovations of rooms, some people would, would sponsor the expense of renovating a room and then a plaque goes on that door saying in memory of a, a past employee or in honor of a past family member. Same way with the bricks that was done mm -hmm. out there going into you the gazebo. You papers. You could sell papers for $100 a brick and just have them. And honestly, the wellness center did the same thing when they did that. So, you know, I mean, I think we have a, I think there's, you know, obviously the city's responsibility would see the sidewalk get done. But I think when it comes to lamppost and grading and, and uh, 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 pavers and stuff like that, you know what, you might be surprised. You might could get a good portion of that covered already. And um, there are benefactors out there that still wants to do some type of endowment work for mm. people, I'm sure. Um, I think we could sell quite a few bricks on that. I do too, I mean, I really do. I mean, you know, uh, lifelong residents of the city of Hartford or, or, or family members who had a, a family member that lived in Hartford for years. Um, you know, I, I'm going to say this, and, and it's, I'm just gonna, it's going to be a little awkward how I say it. Unfortunately, the quorum that we have here tonight complicates the matter of trying to get anything done if, if two of us abstain. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I asked Mr. Chen to, do, to specifically say how all this work was being laid out, mm -hmm. that it did not come under any direction of any council member or mayor, that this is based upon recommendations by our engineers in conjunction with the contractor. Mr. Likens and I are in awkward positions because we own, between the two of us, three buildings mm -hmm. that are facing right there on Main Street. 
I, I would prefer to abstain voting on this, but from the business aspect of it, from a business minded individual that, that historically that I've tried to be, we've already committed to $51,000 worth of expense. If we were not to act, take action on this, we have $118,000 to spend. We've already spent $51,000 of it. We've already got the grant for the rest of it. Uh, I think it would be a poor decision on our behalf to not move forward That's on this. That's what I was thinking, you know, for the difference. I mean, I really do, and, and you know, and I do think, and I'm not speaking for Mr. Likens, I regret the fact that we don't have the compliment here that we could properly abstain because it affects us. But on the flip side of it is, um, that's why I asked him to do that, is that I think we would also be remiss that if we don't take action on this and we throw $51,000 out the window in addition to 80% of the $700,000 grant, uh, you know, I just... I would point out to you that the engineering is actually going to be covered by your grant. If you do vote to do this project, if you don't, that we have to pay for ourselves. Thousand moves over <laughs> underneath our column. Your pocket or our pockets? I was saying goes. Yeah. You know, and everything. So can having said that, I mean, so it's all right for me, me and Jerry. I can make the motion. Jerry can. We what the bang, Jerry? <laughs> I didn't say that. I think we well, all. I make a motion that we uh, accept the bid for the project for the Harper downtown sidewalk improvement. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor, up with the hand. Thank you. My secretary's <laughs> done in Nashville. <laughs> you could be in trouble. She's going to try to read your writing. Uh, yeah, I could. I can read my better than she can you can read hers. You can decipher it. <laughs> I gotta uh, rewrite mine before it gets cold. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> and you sure can't read what it was, can you? <laughs> All right, thank you, gentlemen. Um, I'll call your attention next. Last time we had a bill from Asphalt Services. There was some question about it. So I've had them come and... Did you ask them what the original quote was? Well, there, there's been two original quotes. The first original quote was for $5,750, and that was to Deany, Mayor Minton, and that was on the condition that we would buy the fill rock and haul it ourselves. And the only thing they would do is smooth Gra it out. Grade it and level it and, and compact it. Black top over it. Okay. The next bid was seventy nine hundred and some odd dollars. That's the one I remember. Yes, and that was to just pave the lot and the uh, right of way. Okay, so when they went in there, what they did was the initial bid was for sixty two tons of asphalt. They put down. 96 tons because we've asked them to do behind Jerry's too. We've added added that part. Okay, so that's 34 more tons of blacktop that they had to purchase. 32 ton of rock was the initial bid, and when they got to filling in, it was going to be such a dip in it that they decided to go ahead and try to make it as level as they could. So it ended up being 120 ton of rock, which is 88 more ton of rock. And that's the difference between those two bids, the $7,990 and the 13236 Can I see that? Yeah, in the back is where they've got the, what the initial bid was and what, what they did, what they used. So it was a matter of once they got in there to to make it right. If you if you notice, it's a gentle slope off the sidewalk instead of being the the big dip that we did have there. Uh, and of course, they had to take out broken concrete from the the destruction of the bank and and some other things too. So that's one reason that the bid jumped up as high as it did there. Well, I think, like, like I said before, I 
hate that they did without asking us to do right. it. Yeah, that's the problem. That I understand. I, I understand if 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 you know if we had agreed to do all this and they came back with a price and that's what we agreed, I've got no problem with it. But I, I, I struggle with someone coming in and just doing, even though they did it for the right reason. Right. And we and more likely we would have said, yeah, let let's do it because it needs to be done. Right. But you just don't go in and add five or six thousand dollars onto a bill without asking somebody to do it first. And he never, they never talked to you about it at all. You know? What they asked me about was uh, doing the part of the lot behind Jerry's. You know, between the right of way. And so, so what, that would have been the difference in the asphalt. So, uh, yeah. So that. And the, they may have put down a little thicker asphalt than they initially bits. thought, too. So, essentially, Sounds like it's the difference that they did not ask for was, was apparently the rock. Yeah, that's the biggest chunk. Gentlemen, that's, that's how I understand it. They did have the authorization talking to the mayor to do the additional asphalt. Right. Because, because of the easement that we got from him. Mm -hmm. So that would be the difference between the 62 and the 96 ton of asphalt. The difference would be is they did not ask and get the okay about the additional rock to make the the, black, the parking lot a more usable parking lot. Um, and I'm kind of like David on that. I mean, you know, nobody likes surprises. The, and that's the point that I understood from somewhat the last meeting was that, you know, I remember the $7,900 one. I don't remember the one that Mr. Minton got, Mayor Minton got earlier. But that was the one that was in the minutes. Yeah, but it's but again we've all slept once or twice since yeah, then. Yeah. You know, but I remember the the last one being seventy some odd hundred dollars. And I do know that with the easement that that was gonna cost more asphalt. The rock is the question. That that's none nobody to my knowledge, nobody was even consulted on that about the well, rock. It's like Terry said, what what's the final bill was thirteen thousand, right? Yes. So that rock cost six six thousand dollars more. That's a good so question. Eighty eight more tons of it. Six thousand dollars. Well, they, there's also additional asphalt too as part of that six thousand dollars. Remember when we added their bid was just to do the lot and the easement. That was we, that was the five that was the first bid, right? Well it's the second bid. Seventy nine something. And then the EDC said we I'm gonna toss in there because I think I remember when that was originally being discussed with Dini is that that was part of the consideration before Jerry was part of the EDC, the council, anything. He said something about that lot, and if I remember correctly, they said that it wasn't it was it wasn't that big. That they'd probably do it anyway, just because it would have it would have uh, made it look better. Read. Yeah. But they've used extra asphalt there for some reason. I know that. Uh, well, a portion of that asphalt is going to be cut out to have that sidewalk laid next to the building. Because you can't lay concrete, particularly handicap accessible, on top of asphalt to get the grade that you need to get. Okay, how how wide is that sidewalk going to be? I don't know. I haven't heard. I haven't heard. First bid was fifty four, fifty five hundred dollars, and your last one was seventy nine hundred. I'm just. It took. It just took a lot of rock. I think. I mean, I'm just to, to get it up to where they could blacktop it and it'd be a usable lot instead of having a dip coming off that sidewalk. I'm just Charles' decision. I mean, I don't know much about. Asphalt and rocking, and if you put that much rock down, couldn't you put a dirt base down and then rock on top no, of it? No, or, would not, not with that compact major. I mean, compaction. I don't, like I said, I don't know anything about it, and I don't know what yeah. the price of rock is. Or <laughs> rock is not as expensive yeah. as the hall bills. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I, you know, like I said, you I just, just, yeah, if you buy that, that, if you buy three hundred dollars worth of rock, you got three hundred dollars to haul it. Yeah, yeah, I just, like I mean, roughly. Just concerned. Let me say this: that I mean, I'm, they take care of us mm -hmm. with their blacktop. I mean, we they've given us some doesn't look like good deals, but they've given us some good deals. They take care of us, and they'll do things that they don't charge us for. <coughs> now, 
they regardless of what we do, I think it needs to be made imperative yeah. that nobody does any work. Yeah. If there's a change order, we have to be notified of that change order before I'm any work is being done. This is my invoice for my gravel when I did my... Three thousand three hundred ten dollars for your driveway. For the gravel, but there's the original. You can see from that's from Green River, but that's where the dense grade and everything. They brought in ten ton, or not ten. I don't know. Whatever they brought, it's on there. It's, there's a couple different invoices in there from them. This was all these invoices is just rock. Probably. We had a lot of rock. We had a lot of grade. Tara's driveway that she just built her house. If if all this is just rock, this is rock and There's delivery. In there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nobody wants to go get their own rock. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I've done it, but but I have to rent a trailer to do it. And no, they they make bought their own rock. Ter yeah. Tara's and bill totaled up three thousand three hundred ten dollars fifty nine cents just for rock her driveway. Now her driveway is twenty. 24 foot wide because I'm wanting to build a building and I measured to the other day to get some idea of how it was going to look, get some idea. Sitting on her, her driveway is 24 foot wide, but it's probably 100 foot long or longer, mm -hmm. roughly 75 to 100 About, foot long. Yeah, 65 to 75 probably. You know, so $3,300 for the rock. And when I'm sitting here looking at the bill, rock's not that bad when you think about it. It's a, it's a stinking delivery charge, you know. Right. They get you on. But don't get me wrong, the rock, the rock is still more expensive than the hall bill. But and granted, I had mine in stages, so some of it had rained and, and settled and they had to bring more in. They don't have tonnage on here. Yeah, they do. Huh. But just so you all know, I guess. Well, regardless, the fact is, I mean, I think, uh, you know, whatever we actually take on this, it needs to be clear to all vendors and contractors that nothing will be paid without an approved change order being done. What did we decide? What did we discuss last meeting about how we're going to pay with it? Well, the EDC made a recommendation, I think, to pay that 50, whatever that number is. I had Mary Bell on, Tara was with me. We had Mary Bell on the phone this morning and we asked her a couple of questions and I, I didn't mean nothing bad about it, but I wanted to make sure she didn't either do a typo or could she go back and read her writing. As we were talking about writing a while ago, she just sent me a text. My notes and minutes says Mr. House estimated a cost of fifty-seven fifty for the paving. Mm -hmm. That was the very first one apparently that Dini had gotten. Oh, and then I the one I remember that that's more recent was a seventy some odd hundred dollars. Remember I kept saying I seven seventy nine nine seventy eight, seven, eight, nine, I couldn't remember, but I, I do and I went home and looked and I couldn't find a copy. I had a copy that Lisa gave me a copy, but I couldn't find it. And so how how are we paying them for this? Well the fifty seven fifty came out of the EDC funds. Yeah. Or the ec no, excuse me, the economic development account. And that leaves us a balance. Because we voted on that last week, right? Or last mm -hmm. one ever the last mm -hmm. one was. Yes, we did. And that leaves us a balance of what? Um, right. Seventy. About eight thousand bucks. Seventy five hundred. I mean, it's at the, it, I mean, remember the EDC does not spend money. It only makes recommendations on economic development and and how to how you know on, on, and its purview, but it does not have any authority to spend money. Um, I mean, this could we could we could vote and vote make a motion to pay it out of the occupational tax or to, out of the economic development account, either one, without their blessing. Make that clear. So you know, I'll leave that totally uh, up to everybody. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I mean, I, as each account has its own separate account, so you have a budget for each account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that budget. May have to be altered a little bit. Modified yeah. somewhat. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest issue is when that budget has been presented, it was based upon the EDC recommendation, I think. So, how much do we have in the economic development account? Mm, probably about forty or fifty thousand dollars I think that it can more than pay for the difference. Yeah. Well, then I make a motion that we pay the balance out of the economic development. I, I really don't want to touch occupational tax if we don't All have to. Money. 
I'll second the motion. But, but with, the, but with, like you said, I. When Need we, change orders when we when we oh, when yeah. we deliver that check or whoever well, that kind of I mean, I'm as surprised as you were whenever he handed it to me, you know, yeah. because I didn't anticipate it jumping up like it did. Yeah. So um, I I thought they might have a little bit extra because of behind Jerry's building, but yeah. so. <clears throat> any more discussion? All right, if there's none, then we'll vote all in favor of doing that. Uplifted hand. Thank you. I want to point something out before we leave this subject. I mean, because it's obviously been a point of contention of some individuals are not real crazy about some things. But uh, the occupational tax and uh, the economic development has done, if you look at the city of Hartford from Rough River to Muddy Creek, a lot of positive things has happened. Starting at the water plant, the water plants had a lot of rehab done that had not had anything touched to it in those excess of 20 years. And the water plant, in my, and, and it has not arrived, but it is in a whole lot better shape than it was. Uh, Hartford proper has taken an overall improvement in its face, face look but from private investors like Miss Allen buying her building and and uh, Spink Shopping Center being repainted and then other people buying properties and grants that have been afforded, small grants afforded from the economic development uh, programs out there. Uh, the wall, uh, I will reiterate, looks, I've had a lot of compliments that said this, the wall looks tremendous better and that the parking lot is a much needed parking lot. Uh, I don't think we would be remiss that parking lot was not necessarily put in to create, the sole purpose of fixing that wall was not just so we can add 10, 12, 14, 8, whatever number of parking spots it is. Uh, that wall was a common shared wall that came from when we got the property from the Citizens Bank along with the property, and the building wall needed to be stabilized for anything to be done with that property. And uh, so, you know, having said that, that's one of the reasons we did it. But I would encourage, regardless of who sits on this committee or this uh, council in the future, uh, none of us may be around this table, but I would encourage that we the efforts have been made and a lot of positive things has been done. Cemeteries in Hartford, both cemeteries look fantastic. I saw uh, Thomas today, Thomas Randolph. Yes. I told him what we were doing and he was, he said they've got, they're sending out letters over there to people they know that have family buried in that cemetery looking for donations. And I told him what we were going to do and he was just, he was just beside himself. So, so you know, I would encourage people to look at the water plant, look at how Hartford proper looks, look at the wall, look at the parking lot, and go up here and look at the two cemeteries. I mean, I, I've lived since 1990 on Embry Woods Drive. I've never seen a Hartford Cemetery look as nice as it does right now. And I can remember, uh, I'm sure most of you can, how the old Haytai Cemetery looked, uh, Memorial Gardens looked. You didn't even know it was a cemetery. And has it arrived? No, it's not, but I think it looks a lot better. But I would encourage that, that the endeavors do not stop I do think that the city park needs to be looked at. The next venture is looking at the city park. It needs to have facelifts done, uh, improve our, our parks to where kids can enjoy it, bring other people into the community and do it. And let's be quite honest, our curbs and gutters, our head walls and, and various things like that needs to be looked at. I mean, improve the infrastructure of uh, continue improving the infrastructure. But, um, you know, this, the, I feel like that, uh, uh, the things that has been done has been definitely a positive improvement for the overall looks of the city of Hartford. And I don't think we need to, this community, this council needs to rest on its laurels. There's a lot more things that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You cannot tackle all of them at one time. You do the best you can with what you've got and you continue to move forward. So having said that, I'll be quiet. Just out of curiosity, and this is off subject, but you brought up the cemetery. And you going to refresh my memory because it's been a while. It, before we ever talked about it, a long time ago before when I first got on, what did we ever come up with when we had that problem with the that wall? Wall erosion? Yeah. erosion. The engineering bill was ridiculous. Nobody you couldn't afford to do it and to be honest with you, Jason went up there before Danny Schatmeyer passed away and witched and there are some graves pretty close to the edge. I will tell you part of the problem and, I, and I'll stand to be corrected on any of this is erosion and we at some point something may have to be done with that and we looked at several things that the price was horrible mm -hmm. but the way it's being mowed and letting the grass grow up on it we all know that if you take all the grass off of something or you take it down to a nub erosion will take place now i, I would encourage there are a few things on top of that 
that might need to be clipped and trimmed and trees or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we all know that vegetation is what helps holes it. I, it. We've had a lot of mammoth rains, and I've not seen anything detrimental over the last year or two that since we've talked about that. I, mean, I was just kind of curious because I remember when I first joined the council, that was one of the hot topics when Denny was still here and what we were going to do because it was starting to. Now that you brought it up, and we may go home tonight and we may have to do a detour and get around it. <laughs> you know. I'll, I'll personally just kind of put in though that my biggest concern, obviously, I think erosion at some point with those grays on the top, you're going to have to address yes. in the future, mm -hmm. whenever that yeah. is. Yeah. It is a little dangerous for those of us who have to walk up Iron Mountain to get up to the trail because if there's a car coming and you're on top of that hill, like you're hugging that. Well, I brought it up, but I do want to thank the city for going out there and putting that reflector down there by that concrete abutment. Uh, okay, you go out on our mountain road. I'm a little bit on my side, and I'm a little bit on your side, and so are you. And it does cause a danger. That hill is a danger. That, that hill in general, whether it be the cemetery or the road or how narrow it is, it is an issue. Mm -hmm. And I do think that a more reasonable alternative needs to come into play. I don't have an answer for that. And I think right now, as somebody who drives by it four, five, six, seven, eight time, times a day, uh, we've been fortunate and it's holding. But I don't think we could bet on that for long term. I think at some point it will be an issue that will have to be addressed. I just don't know that it could be done at the expense that we heard. I drove a school bus out there on that route several years, and it is a, a dangerous situation with school bus as big as it is getting it in and out there. It's not an easy road to drive, is it? No. It's not. It really isn't an easy road to drive at all. All right. Uh, the next item of business is, uh, says his ethics board, uh, Last time I had recommended uh, Deborah Bolt and it was determined she lives outside the city. And so when I called her up, she said, I don't know why I didn't think of that. You know, that I <laughs> she was so eager to, to help us. So. You mean so eager? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have talked to uh, Judy Moore and she's agreed to uh, serve on our ethics board. So I'll bring the name of Judy Moore uh, for your approval to serve on our ethics board. You need I make a motion, a motion that uh, we accept uh, Judy Moore as a uh, member of the Ethics Committee. Okay. Forward. I'll second that. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, under new business, uh, municipal order, uh, what you have is a organizational chart for the city of Hartford. Uh, we've added two, uh, you've added two new jobs, uh, and the municipal order, run, just run off a copy, uh, it says municipal order of the city of Hartford, Kentucky, approving the organizational chart and the pay scale to include an activities grant coordinator and the code enforcement officer. We had added him to the organizational chart as far as I can remember. Whereas we recognize that a personnel policy <coughs> system is indispensable to effective and efficient city government, and whereas it's essential to develop a broad yet flexible framework for human resource development that addresses compensation, clarification of employees, make available to all employees a guidance for uniform implementation of employee work rules. <coughs> whereas it has become necessary to include in the salary scale or include the salary scale as follows. The City of Hartford Organizational Chart, page one, add an activity grant coordinator and a code enforcement officer under the mayor. And both of those, uh, chapter five was compensation. Uh, the compensation has been added so that they earn, uh, both are paid $200 a month. Um, and so then it says, be it ordained uh, that the pay scale be added to the personnel policies and procedures. Uh, I'd like for, as a side note here, before we finish, uh, I'd like for us to have a committee sometime to just sit down and come up with a pay scale. Uh, you know, the last one we did was like in 16. And, uh, 
we just need to update our pay scale and, and kind of keep it. We've, we've done some piecemeal things here and there. Uh, police officers, for example, you know, we've passed a motion to raise their by a certain percentage and things. So we just, I'd like to have a pay scale that says if you're certified here, if this is your job, you sign at this amount after five years you're here, after 10 here, 15, 20, 25, whatever. And so that it doesn't just depend upon the mayor's whim as to what you get paid, okay? I'd like something that's a little more consistent than what we've got now. All right. Um, be it ordained that the amended personnel policies and procedures be waived, altered, or suspended only by change of municipal order in any prior. This is just a municipal order that sets these two positions in their organizational chart and de defines where they are on the uh, pay scale. So I would accept a motion to adopt this municipal order. Make a motion that we adopt the municipal order 1801 pay scale. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor, uplifted hand, please. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. And the last thing that I have is the uh, a resolution 1803. Um, if I read it, it sounds funny because, well, let me read it to you. Whereas the city of Hartford has applied for and received funding from the Community Development Block Grant Program, the CDBG, for the purpose of upgrading its wastewater treatment system, whereas there will be a considerable number of documents and agreements that must be executed in association with the grant funding and implementation of the project, which we've already done. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Hartford as follows. Section 1 that the mayor is hereby authorized, directed, and empowered to execute all necessary documents or agreements on behalf of the city to implement the CDBG project. And section two, that any document or agreement that constitutes a significant change to the scope of the project will be brought before the city council for review and approval. This says <coughs> I get to sign the papers that that involve the city in the project, you know, that. It's just the legal thing. I thought we were. I thought we'd signed these before, but. We yeah, have, I, and we've talked about these CBG resolutions before. Yeah. Well, what it is is that there may have been one or two at grad that kind of let this paperwork fall by the, through the cracks. So they're making everybody do it again? Yeah. Okay, so I need a motion to accept that resolution. So move. Second. Okay. <coughs> Um, any discussion to it? Okay, all in favor, uplifted hand. Thank you. All this opposed? This is for the sewer project, isn't it? Huh? This is for the sewer. No, it's for no, the water for treatment. Water. I thought you said wastewater. Oh, it is. It's for the wastewater treatment system. That would be that the was, sewer. That was, that was way back. That's yeah. what I said. I thought this is already Is this kind of after the fact? I don't think it's wastewater. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's the, uh, Water the projects plant. we did this summer, I think it's what it's supposed to be. It's still after the fact. Yeah. yeah. But if y'all are all right, we'll change it for it's appropriate. The wording is appropriate. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There, but. yeah. All right. Um, no other business that we can consider or entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion that we adjourn. Thank Second. you. Uh,